Or the the rolling miles that the government uh, managing it. So remember, the, the the biggest customer that we ever had was the VA, yeah. right? And the HL7 question almost made me throw up in my mouth a little bit, <laughs> having done that for a long, way too long. And I saw more pipe and hat than XML than I ever wanted to see. So uh, the, the the question about that was more about could you ever convince this country that you should centralize all this data there? That was what I was rolling my eyes at. It was like when you say, how can we actually get this through? We 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 can bring up any topic we want in this room, and half the room will go over there, and half the room will go over there. Maybe not in California, but you know. Um, that th the idea that in the current political climate, but it's getting yeah, bigger. It's getting yeah. But my point is that all the work Todd's doing in a niche before him, amazing, right? Just amazing. Love them both. Um, th that's great, right? And all of the date, the challenges, and all the things that are happening are fantastic. It was more to the idea like, can we actually convince the marketplace, who you know. Right now we're battling between what's better, keeping them all uninsured or actually doing something with it. I mean, the, the, the conversation is so ridiculous at this point that, that I, I cannot comprehend the, uh, them, we allowing them to play the role. Not that they couldn't, but that, that, that we would allow them to play the role. So it's fair. I rolled my eyes. I muttered under my breath. But it was for a different idea than could they do it. It was more would we ever allow them to. So that, that, that's more of the context. Okay, so first I have a commentary about something, Matthew, that you said related to position practice patterns and having them based. I, it's really supporting a lot of what people have been saying about the data analytics piece. I think there's a lot of traditional ways people practice that are not necessarily supported by the evidence. Mm -hmm. And so I think, it's, think that the data analytics over time will continue to um, support different practice patterns than what people are using. And so I, I think that we're beginning to see that in certain places. So that, that's just a comment about that. My question to Jeff, though, really has to do with something. I'm just moderating. <laughs> I'm really okay. Okay. So as you can see, I'm not a 30-year-old white male. So my perspective is, is somewhat different. By the way, Derek finds that comment extremely flattering. <laughs> <laughs> and neither is Derek. <laughs> so there's been some discussion lately related to an article or I think a blog post in the Atlantic uh, that was, you know, Silicon Valley won't be able to come up with a good health app or be able to fix health care because the, everyone's perspective is very similar. There's a lot of people who are all white, who are all male, who are all have a very particular perspective. There's a lot of folks, there's a lot that we're learning from quantified self. And so there's not a lot of diversity of opinion in terms of how things are being developed. So I'm interested in what you all are doing within your companies to try to make sure that you're looking at different things like the variables that are introduced by different socioeconomic factors, um, ethnicity, race, other kinds of things to make sure that this is not just a solution for one kind of person, but it is more broadly applicable. So, if you look at the first comment to that Atlantic article, right. you, you may recognize the author. And so it was me. Uh, and then I talked to the guy who wrote it, and smart guy, nice guy, all those things. I don't know if he's here tonight, he's from Stanford. Um, the premise that Silicon Valley is made up of 30 year old white guys. I would ask you all to turn to your left and turn to your right. I don't see any one of you surrounded on both sides in that situation. Um, the other idea that that article put forth was not only was it all 30 year old white guys, but we all go to yoga, which clearly that's not happening. Uh, and so there's, there's a bunch about the idea that the problem can only be solved by, um, that the problem can't be solved because of the makeup of the demographics. And I, I think it's fundamentally flawed, but I think it's a good reminder of what we need to do in the design practice and, and how we bring about products. But the idea that the only person that can fix the obesity problem is an obese problem. The only person that can fix alcoholism is an alcoholic. The only person that can, the premise of the article to me was still kind of flawed in its basic idea, which was, well, we're all too similar, we all go to yoga, we all have Fitbits, we all run around, and therefore we're in good shape. I, you know, I'm an engineering. That is not a bastion of good health, right? <laughs> yeah. You don't walk around an engineering room and say, so 
But I think the joke I even made in the comment was, if you want, you want people to fix obesity, let a bunch of silicon engineers fix that. It's like, stop. <laughs> you can change the behavior of, you know, coke drink. It's with the assumption, with the exception of maybe Matt, so the rest of us look like crap. So, uh, <laughs> so, so I think that, so I think that was just fundamentally flawed in its premise, but it was a good reminder. And uh, there's a couple people I asked to be on the panel who couldn't be, and I was very cognizant of the fact that. You know, you can look at this panel and it's kind of like, like, they all look the same, they all say the same things. There's a lot of uh, homogeneity. Uh, <laughs> plus one for me, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, that's probably a good point. So, um, but I think that the fundamental issue is more when the, how this community comes together, right? And so there's a lot of people that could be on this panel. There's a lot of people in the audience that are a lot smarter than people up here. Um, and so as we head into break, we only have about five minutes left, so actually, what I want to do is actually propose three questions, of which we're going to do a rocket fire kind of down. They can answer any one of the three. And then I'd like to encourage each of you to use that as a jumping off point for your conversations to meet cool people but not Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I love Mary, so I can do this. But, uh, but so um, there's three, and, and two of them are from this gentleman over here, which is just brilliant. Great questions, and I'm going to just totally rip them off and give them credit. They're fantastic. But there's one that I actually want to bring up that kind of tails off of the privacy issue. So, position entered and control and all these things. When you start making money, this is my, I'm going to put this out there to cause a problem and I just wish I could have done it 15 minutes ago. So you start making money off of my data, I want my cut. So when all of a sudden you're making data off, maybe making money off of my data, what's my role in the financial transaction? Now you can argue, and I'll give you, an, I'll give you even a hypothesis to start your arguments with each other with that uh, you know Google kind of started this obviously with AdSense and monetizing clicks, and we're we're kind of in the 1.0 stage of healthcare where we were a while ago. So that's one thing, which is what's the patient role in the financial transaction when companies are making money off of the data, and uh, is it a good enough excuse to say, oh, it's blinded, uh, I can't cut you a check, sorry. Because that's probably what I would try the first time. <laughs> so it's blinded. I don't know which data was I used. The second question and is a great question. This came from this gentleman. That uh, I'm not going to read it word for word, but it's um, the, the lifetime of data. There's a nuclear kind of like nuclear fission uh, half life to um, the the relationship. And so as you're pushing this data down the road, you might not be with that same position forever. How do you? How does this privacy and ownership issue as that? Is your relationship with your healthcare provider and your system are changing? How do you keep that going uh, as the half-life money relationship continues to extend? Brilliant question. Uh, I totally wish I came up with it myself. Uh, but that's a great question over here. And the third one uh, that I want to leave you with, and then we'll do the kind of rapid fire in that, uh, <laughs> this, is, this is such a great question. Again, I'm so pissed I didn't come up with this. So um, he, he has a great quote. In the long run, we're all dead. Pitch. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, 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 that's the factual part of the dissertation. <laughs> so, do uh, medical records, like census data, eventually belong in the national record? Is there a public health responsibility, and can your privacy extend into the grave? And I want to add one thing onto this: is don't just think about the things we've been thinking about. Uh, so I'm going to add on to your question if that's okay. Don't just think about your glucose data and strep throat and pregnancy and all those things. Think about genomics and the things that are left behind for the rest of your family. So, guys, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> we'll rapid fire and then do it. Well, from a regulatory standpoint, uh, when when you sign that HIPAA consent agreement, it, it's for the life of you. It's, it, it it extends beyond your physician's care of you, uh, care for you, hopefully. So the actual form of my question was that what happens in the case of this repository on the bankrupt or being taken over, and mm -hmm. what happens to the preservation of the data if the entity fails? It's also she can repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> that. Oh, sorry. Um, so so the, the, to, to pull that back together, 
you have a third party, Practice Fusion, eh, let's use Epic. Epic goes out of business. <laughs> what happens to all you're welcome? What happens to all that data? And so I don't know how this became a cheerleading session. But, so um, so all, when that happens, what happens to all that data? They are centrally responsible for that data, and they are the repository. What happened? Because that's supposed to extend on forever, but that company is responsible to stockholders and the open market and everything else. Uh, well, I can speak for us and us alone. There, there isn't much precedent for this, um, but our right there will be. Um, our uh, responsibility is to patients first, providers second. The data is very sensitive to us. You know, the, the forefront of every decision we make is security. Um, so that would extend, you know, into any business transaction. There's no, there's no. Uh, uh, money to be made or profit to be gained from exposing patient information uh, because ultimately it's a tarnish of your image. So we, in, in addition to that, even you know while while we're in business, there is a direct uh, criminal uh, penalty to those of us in charge if we are grossly negligent. Um, so th I have a direct incentive to not let that happen. Uh, I mean, it, it ultimately, it comes down to trust. Uh, and um, if you look across all the data breaches that happen right now, 95% of them are from paper records being taken out of doctor's offices or from client server installs uh, where the server is actually taken out of the physician's office. So it comes down to, you know, the private cloud, sorry Jeff, is, <laughs> is sorry, expon exponentially more secure than having things on paper. Um, more often than not, that paper record is going to get taken by somebody at some point that's not the, the, the you know, by someone who's not really responsible for it. Uh, so I'll go for the first question. Something that we've actually, we talk a lot about and think a lot about, which is the value of um, this data that we collect about ourselves and who, you know, do, do I have a right to profit from it, essentially? And um, one, of the, one of the things that is, is quite, is I think going to be pretty interesting is that uh, you know, your clinical record is very punctuated, but this other information that we're going to collect about ourselves, and maybe it's quantified self, or maybe it's just the stuff my phone knows about me, or it's behavioral data that we input into a 100 plus app, it starts to create this very rich picture of me and my health history and my behavioral history and this very rich longitudinal uh, picture that is very, very valuable over time, especially when um, aggregate